Welcome to the presentation on processing the RTEC LEO 3D scanner data in the Studio software. The RTEC LEO is a, a 3D scanner from RTEC based in Luxembourg, Europe, and the accuracy of the unit is about 100 microns, 0.1 of a millimeter. So I'll run through a sample data set to see what's involved. So here we've got some pipe work measured outdoors. The scanner works outdoors and indoors in bright sunlight. You can see that there's a footpath and a road to the right hand side there. The measuring was done measuring through the cage that's protecting this pipe work. And you can see there's a lot of bushes in the background, so um, a lot of obstructions. So to process the data, First thing is we, we copy the, the field file from the, the scanner to the computer. And then we're going to import that file. It's from the RTEC LEO, so you choose the LEO project. And the file will come in. So the LEO is a self-contained scanner. It's got a rechargeable battery. Um, it's got an inbuilt computer. It does some preliminary processing of the data you're capturing on board the, um, the scanner. It collects um, color information, so it's, it's getting real, real colors of the objects that you're measuring. Um, and it's all stored on board the, the scanner. So it's a self-contained unit um, inside. So once the data's inside here, the first thing we do is we come over to the icon autopilot. We'll go through and answer a few questions, select our scans. This is just the raw data. You can see that uh, it's just a point cloud and you can see the mesh in the background that was the cage. Answer some questions here. You won't do any hole filling. We'll remove the texturing. We don't want any color and texture on the final model. This is an engineering uh, object, so we're not really interested in color and texture. Editing. We'll do a bit of editing. Editing is just to remove the information you're not uh, wanting inside your, your model. So obviously the the vegetation. I'm rolling my middle mouse button to increase the icon side size there. So you can, there's many selection methods. Obviously, you can just choose the one that, uh, that you like the most. Lasso, for example, is a pretty popular one. So you just go around your model, deleting the areas that you're not, a, not wanting as part of your final model. here. So I won't carry on, but you, know, you get the, um, the process here. So once you've cleaned off the data that you're not interested in, just click next. And this is the part where you go and have a coffee, go and have a cup of tea. Uh, while it automatically goes through and processes this point cloud. What it's doing is it's it's um, the first step here, global registration. Um, it's just getting the best alignment of all the point clouds. When we're scanning, the scanner's getting um, snapshots, which we call refer to as 3D frames, and it's getting up to 60 of them every second. So it's getting the best alignment of all those frames. Um, based on geometry and based on texture um, in the global registration. And out layer removal is just what you're interested in. It's tried its best to go through and remove some of them. It's got rid of some of them, not all of them, of course. And the step it's on now is fusion. Um, fusion is the terminology Artec use for, for basically meshing. 
So Fusion is mesh, it's creating a mesh over that 3D point cloud, which is just a triangulated mesh. Um, so that's what it's doing at this point. And that's it. So if you see on our, our project tree on the right hand side here, we now have a, no, a new layer here. This is the, the Fusion or the mesh. Of course we can rename this um, somewhere. Rename. Yeah, so we have rendering options inside the software here, which can be quite useful at times. X-ray. We can change our rendering from perspective to ortho. It'll be more relevant for engineering. You can play around with your degree of X-ray. And this is a, a mesh, if we just re, if you zoom in close, you can see it's a, it's actually a, a triangulated surface. There's fitting uh, capabilities inside the software, fitting of primitives. So I'll just quickly show you that. Um, so if we go under here, construction, we can fit cylinders, spheres, planes, cones. So let's just do a sphere. You've got your normal selection tools up here, whether you want to select through and so on. So just make that a bit smaller. So go and select the area you want to fit and fit your object. In this case, I'm doing a, a pipe. I just double click there to center that area. So you can see here um, we've now fitted a, a cylinder to that uh, mesh that I've selected. And in our, our hierarchy tree here, you see we've now got our cylinder that we've just fitted there. And down the bottom here, you'll see the fitting error, uh, 0.1 of a millimeter. So that's the deviation between the, the mesh that we've measured and the actual cylinder that we've um, created. So you can you can go and you know go and model as many um, surfaces as you like. I'll just do one more up here. Give you the idea. Put another cylinder. We just close this. Come out of here. Oh, before we ex oh yeah, we'll just go and exit out of here. So let's just go and um, show you the um, precision alignment tool. So at the moment, if we click on the front view, say right view, we're not very, very square onto the object. We can align the object based on these primitives that we've uh, modeled. So um, let's go into our precision alignment tools. Here we go here, align. Uh, let's just go and find them, editor, here we go, precision positioning, so come into there, that icon editor, precision aligning, and you can come and assign um, the X, Y, Z axes of the coordinate system, the UCS, you can go and assign the axes of these primitives, so for example, um, this is cylinder 1 here, cylinder 1, which is this one here, I can assign that to the Z, I'll add up there, cylinder one, align with the Z. And then I could say, um, align cylinder two, align it with say Y. So that now when we go and you can see we, we properly lined up the object is, is aligned correctly with our with our primitives that we've fitted. So that's much more easier to work with in a CAD package when we're lined up like this. 
So of course we can import and export um, these primitives that we've created, for example these two here. We could go and export them as cat objects. And we can select the options of exporting those primitives as a, as a step, as an IGIS, or as an XT. So they'll go through into our third party CAD package as, as native uh, primitive um, objects that we've defined in our modeling. And of course, we can also import CAD models. So again, we might have a design of that pipework that we're comparing it to. So we could import that design as a step, I just XT, import it. And then we could do a surface to surface um, inspection and a heat map showing you the deviations uh, between the two surfaces. And there's full alignment tools and the software for aligning the imported model to the scan or vice versa. Pull back this, and just to show you the um, the heat map capabilities of doing inspection, just come back to our measure. Define a tolerance. I'll we'll put a millimeter. So you can see here, we get a, a color coded. Uh, report here of the difference in the two surfaces. And of course, just to give you an idea of scale on the object here, we'll just go and take a measurement across here, just over 1.3 meters across here. So it's a, a small area of pipe work that was measured in a couple of minutes on site with the Leo. And of course, we can export the mesh, this um, original mesh we generated. Of course, we can export that as well. Probably as an STL going into an engineering package, or we could do it as an OBJ, VRML, Disney format. Uh, there's a whole range of different formats here we can export the data out as. So getting the data in and out to other packages is, is fairly straightforward. So that's it from me. So um, thank you very much. for.